so much for being here. I am delighted to be here. And for our time today, I think you should consider me not the artist in residence or a musician, but more of a librarian, a historian. You see, I'm here to present to you a catalog, a catalog as an inventory a compendium of classifications. <laughs> Some might say it's a portrait of a place, not through images, no, no, but through sound. I'll show this slide, and then I'll show that slide, and then I'll probably play some sounds, and then we'll probably go back to this slide, <laughs> and then... We'll, you know, talk a little bit and we'll play some music. <laughs> and we'll have a short Q&A after, and then some of you by that point might be like, thank goodness that's over, we can all go home. <laughs> oh look, there's that slide. <laughs> so why a catalog, you might say? Why not? The gardens here are a giant catalog, full of taxonomies and organization and hierarchies. How many of you here get a seed catalog in the mail? <laughs> oh, I do too. <laughs> I love mine. Oh, you know, people here have been researching things that appear in our seed catalogs for years. They research growth patterns of plants. They research evolution, hybridization, the seeds, the rarity. So my job here is to say, what if we thought that way about sounds? <laughs> oh look, there's that slide. <laughs> This is my microphone that I have recorded over 150 different sounds from the gardens, mostly behind the scenes. Can we make a catalog of these sounds for a place? It would have to be ongoing, of course. You know, just like the herbarium. <laughs> it could be used for further research. It could inspire others to make things with it. It could be a memory bank of sounds that might go extinct due to new technologies or manufacturing or <sighs> climate change. It's a way to document the changing ways we move through the world. Now, some of us take sounds for granted. We listen to sounds and we enjoy them until they start to annoy us. Or of course, sometimes sounds take over. Then they're like weeds. We try to eradicate noise, or at least minimize the disturbance to our sanity. <sighs> Either way, someone somewhere, some along the way, could reclassify this sonic tree of life and make it their own. We sometimes take our sense of hearing all of these things for granted. Sometimes we forget that everyone has a different ability to hear. And beyond that, sounds are ephemeral. We can't keep sounds in a box or bottle them up, but we can preserve them by listening. Around the Botanic Gardens, I chose to look less, listen more. <laughs> I noticed there's all these buildings, old and new, and they all sound different inside. We're in a very new building right now, with lots of new sounds. I started noticing doors. <laughs> and I started cataloging them. Why? There's push bar doors. <laughs> and a 
what electronic doors. <laughs> In a subcategory of these doors are secure doors. Behind them contains moisture sensitive or valuable seeds, books, other materials. I also found one old blast room furnace double door. Let's move on <laughs> to cabinets. <laughs> you probably know what a cabinet is. <laughs> In case you don't, it's a box with small doors on them. And shelves are inside of them, usually full of specimens or books or office supplies. And they have their own unique characteristics of sound. The most exciting cabinets are on wheels. <laughs> Moving on to other solid fixtures within the gardens, it's the exciting world of staircases. <laughs> Most stairs don't make sound by themselves. It's the space a staircase takes up that gives reverberation. But the gardens here has a few set of stairs that I think are worth sonically preserving. Here's a carpeted stair. <laughs> and a rubber-coated wood stair from the 1970s. And one secret staircase from the Victorian. spaces of the gardens, there is much to catalog. There is the white noise of air conditioning. Air conditioning is a sound we often take for granted, or we get so accustomed to it, we forget it's there, until it makes itself known. Miss the miniature click of light switches. But you'll not likely be able to miss the surprising intensity of cooling fans in the conservatory and or canarium.
dark horse of a boiler room that runs the conservatory so the tropical plants are at the right temperature. for its judgment day. <laughs> oh, and quite a few waterfalls run by pumps. Person. I think we've heard enough of the water pumps. Thank you. Uh, no, no, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're going to take a little bit of the water pump. one specialized art sink that it sounds very unique as it has a motor to take things away like paint. And this sink is one floor down and a few doors down from the hall from the cafe that has the espresso machine. desks of the gardens, there are people working away and typing. <laughs> We're poring over collections of objects so that others can study them. who teach others about plants. Many people use the education classrooms and all of its supplies. You find out a lot about materials this way. Things that make hard sounds and soft sounds. Materials with textured grains and smooth surfaces. job. You win. I don't know what you win, but you win something. <laughs> Colored pencils, indeed. There are sounds of, to catalog of people here as well. And they tirelessly face the public day in and day out at registers or on phones. 
Let's take a listen. Thank you for calling Dibber Botanic Gardens. This is Joshua. How may I help you? Taking our ears for a walk into transitional spaces between the indoors and the outdoors, I heard some of the greenhouse staff out and about. They're growing plants from seeds. They're hanging a special hose system for watering, and it has fans and humidifiers and sliding racks to maximize efficiency. <laughs> taking cuttings of plants, small ones, to help them grow into, well, bigger plants. <laughs> and they're raking. And sawing. And wheelbarrowing. Josephine Street, where you might pass by those interstitial gardens unknowingly. And I catalog the sounds of planting, of course, and replanting. Sounds catalogued this year might be entirely different than the ones you hear next. Plants grow and change. The buildings do too. Squeaky doors hopefully get some grease, and exhibits change out. Classrooms of children come and go. We notice the delicate petals of alpine flowers, and we admire the rare bloom of the corpse flower despite the smell. 
So what if in cataloging the sounds we hear, we might give those sounds a, a small place of reference of their uniqueness? Now, I don't normally have a tool shed in my backyard. It's not at my disposal in my urban environment, but <laughs> I really think that the tool shed is the best place for sounds. Of all the spaces here in the gardens, watch out for the tool shed. enter a sound world quite unlike that of the indoors. We are surrounded by the environment. Folks here, this sound is stringing up lights. That's some people's whole job here, all here. for less twinkly sounds, don't worry. There's always a time when someone's cell phone will go off, no matter where you are. Or, if you're lucky, you just might get the very special combination of baby stroller on cobblestone plus a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> not to be missed, not to be missed. Sometimes a leaf blower might call to you, but delicately, from the neighborhood. small exhaust fans throughout the gardens will tell you that there's always something going on. Though we might be immersed in nature, this is a nature cultivated by humanity. It's a nature that needs us to look after it to perpetuate it and support it. There's no one way to catalog a place. I catalog the cues of families at the peak of the holidays. so that we might keep it in our memories, there's now a record of the sound of the bamboo here rustling and rattling when it's dry. A 
and a moment of grass brushing against the skin. These sounds are reminders that, like a visual catalog where each plant gets its photo and description, each plant also makes a different sound, even if I'm not there to record it. And there's so much more to hear. There's a limitless, dynamic quality to water. and a vast library of voices, laughter, and even joy. All of them have audio of like these weird sounds in the building. Fear of something that can stir a poop, I guess. The water was 34. This is in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, we should probably use that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm walking around, I'm like, oh, wow, this is cool. And I'm like, oh, I planted this. I sowed these seeds. So if we think about it, in starting a catalog of sounds, uh, a garden of sounds, if you will, I found that it's possible to make that garden grow. And all you have to do is listen. Thank you.